Hi everyone, I'm gonna take you on a journey and that journey is a pretty amazing one that literally will overturn our way of looking at music and music theory for about 2,600 years. Now, let me take you through what we basically found. You might remember that I said before that I discovered only a few weeks ago that a triangle that's an isosceles triangle represents perfectly musical intervals and their inverse intervals simply by taking the height of a triangle over one half of its base. Its inverse would simply be the full base over its height. Now the way that would get represented would be, for example, a perfect fourth has an inverse of a perfect fifth. And a perfect fourth is four over three. I simply double the three, make it the numerator, make the four the denominator, so it becomes six over four, which is then equal to three over two of the perfect fifth. And this works all throughout the scale. But I noticed something strange, something really, really strange about this. And it works perfectly all the way up to the major and minor seventh. And I could not for the life of me figure out why. Because while I'm matching exactly the Pythagorean just tuning intervals, my intervals using this triangular method gave me different values for only two of the 14 total intervals. And I couldn't figure out why. The value that my method points us to is that the minor seventh would be 1.7 repeating and the major seventh would be 1.92. Yet the Pythagorean interval that was given to us literally 2,600 years ago by Pythagoras himself suggests that the minor seventh is nine over five and the major seventh is 15 over eight. So that's very different. That gives us a ratio of 1.8 and 1.875. So I started to try to understand why this is happening because <clears throat> my ratio of 16 over nine was directly related to the nine eighths of the major second. So simply double the eight to 16, make the nine the denominator, 16 over nine, and that gets to 1.7 repeating, and then 25 over 24 for the minor second. Do the same thing, double the 24, becomes 48 over the 25, that gives us 1.92. Now what's going on here? So I decided to look at this from a factorization perspective. I wanted to look at it from the standpoint of, okay, what if we took the inverted mean values of each of these intervals? So in other words, I would take the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, and I would add them together and then divide that by two, okay? So I've got 1.333 repeating plus 1.5, right, equals 2.83 repeating. So then when I take that and divide it by two, it gives me a number that's pretty close to the square root of two, right? So if I continue to do this, what I find is that that value that was close to the square root of two comes out to 1.416. Well, the square root of two is the average of the two interval values of 45 over 32, doubling it 64 over 45. That gives me 1.40625 and 1.42 repeating for the diminished fifth and diminished, uh, diminished, I'm sorry, diminished fifth and the augmented fourth. So when we take the average of these two numbers, we now find we've got a new way to derive almost perfect square root of two value, simply by taking 45 over 32 plus 64 over 45, and then dividing that sum by the number two. So now we're exactly at 1.4142. So the new way to derive a closer approximation for the irrational value of the square root of two. Now, if I continue this process, what you'll find is that it makes this pattern. So I then take the major third, which is 1.25, I add it to its inverted value, which is the minor six, which is 1.6, right? And I add those two together and divide it by two, and that gives me 1.425. So I'm starting with 1.4142, which is the square root of two, then I go to 1.416 repeating. Then you'll notice it just keeps going up a little bit, 1.425. Then I went to the minor third of the major six, that's 1.43 repeating. Then I go to 1.4514 for the major second and minor seventh. Then I go to the minor second and the major seventh, that's 1.48083 repeating. And then I get to the octave and it's 1.5. So it's a progression, the mean values, the arithmetic mean values are progressing 
from the square root of two at a starting point through the seven pairings of intervals, there's totally 14 intervals, I get to 1.5. And you see the progression is linear, right? Or it might be logarithmic. I'll look into that and let you know. So then I thought, well, <clears throat> okay, what if I do that same analysis using Pythagorean just tuning? Now there's a somewhat known problem with the minor seventh and the major seventh using these interval values. They don't seem to have, and some have complained, of lack of stability. Why, you know, would they be lacking stability? Pythagoras gave us the values of nine over five for the minor seventh and 15 over eight for the major seventh. So what's really going on here? Is there a way that we can check this and see what happens with the arithmetic mean? Maybe we can find something out. So when we do the same thing, all of the other ones were the same until you get to the fifth and sixth pairing. And the fifth and sixth pairings give us different values, right? So the fifth and sixth pairing basically was giving us from here, uh, so you've got the, what's this? One here, 1.125 and 1.8, right? So where did it go? Fifth and sixth pairing is, where did it put it? Okay, here it is. The fifth and sixth pairings give us this answer. Right? So the major second is 1.125 in Pythagorean just tuning. The minor seventh is 1.8. Right, so it's right here. So we add those together, divide them by two, and it gives us 1.4625. That's different from the one I had down here, which the fifth pairing gave me 1.4514 using my triangular method instead of the Pythagorean values for the minor seventh and major seventh. So now let's look at the sixth and see what happens. We have the minor second and the major seventh, and we have 1.0416 repeating plus 1.875 divided by two, equals 1.4583. But wait a minute, something doesn't work here. In every one of these cases, the number started from a smaller number and went to a larger number. So 1.4142, 1.416 repeating, 1.425, 1.4333, and then 1.5. So it has the same progression as we did for the first four, but when we get to the fifth progression, now it goes to 1.46, and then the next one is smaller? Doesn't seem right. So then I thought, well, is there a way to verify this further? Can we see what's actually going on here? What if we did the geometric mean for these inverted interval values as pairings? So if we run the geometric mean, we have the square root of two on mine, multiplied the square root of two, comes out to the square root of two. Again, because you have to square root, it's x times y taking the square root gives you the geometric mean. So then if I do that, and I multiply the pairing of the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, 1.3 repeating times 1.5, that equals two. And then I take 1.25 of the major third times the minor sixth of 1.6 also equals two. I take 1.2 for the minor third and the major sixth of 1.6 repeating also equals two. But using Pythagorean tuning, something happens here where it breaks. The 1.125 of the major second has to be multiplied by the 1.8 and that does not equal two. 1.125 times 1.8 equals 2.025. So if I take it to the major seventh, I have 1.0416 repeating for the minor second multiplied by 1.875 equals 1.95. It doesn't even get us to two. All of the other patterns of multiplication gave us two and therefore the geometric mean is the square root of two, giving us the center of the wave, the separation of light from darkness and sound itself, the musical scale. So what's really going on here? Let's do it on mine. All of these were the same until we got to here. We'd use my triangular method. I take 1.125, right, which was up here of the major second, multiply it by the minor seventh of 1.777 repeating, that equals two. 
It's perfect. Then using the same method, 1.0416 repeating times 1.92 equals two also. Therefore, the geometric mean for both are perfectly the square root of two. The reason why the major and minor seventh sound so bad or don't sound stable is because they're not in the right interval positions. And then of course, we get the octave double, it still works as well because two times one Right? And then the square root would still be the square root of two. So for some reason, I believe Pythagoras obscured these actual values. He was smart enough to know, I believe, these triangles, if you could point to that on the board. He was smart enough to know the triangles that you see here. And these triangles are defining the foundational basis of music intervals. I would have never discovered it had it not been for the fact that I did a ton of work on deciphering the Great Pyramid and the Pyramids on Giza Plateau. Because I did, it took me on a journey through factorization. It also took me on a journey through music, as we can see. And it's actually taken me on a pretty dramatic journey through the quadrivium. So the last piece that's not covered, which is we've got arithmetic clearly here. We've got geometry clearly here. We have music interval clearly here, and the one piece that's missing, astronomy and astrology. What does the minor seventh and the major seventh, now the true values being known as 16 over nine and 48 over 25? And as we raise consciousness, everyone gets a bit of an upgrade and starts to understand more of these mysteries better. But what would be representing the major and minor seventh in the constellations? I believe it's Ophiuchus and Orion. The missing 114th is Orion. Its shadow is Ophiuchus. One sits below the plane of the zodiacal ecliptic. The other sits above the plane of the zodiacal ecliptic. And right now we are in exactly Ophiuchus. We are in the constellation of Ophiuchus right now, which would actually begin around November 8th and go until uh, November 27th. Orion constellation would be also a new zodiac that would be approximately from <clears throat> May 8th until um, May 27th. Interesting. I believe that the minor seventh and the major seventh are the missing seven, the missing key of the seven. And I think we're definitely gonna be seeing and hearing more about this. I'm planning on publishing this as a paper. What this does, the geometric mean and the arithmetic mean make right triangles. So you've got heights of the geometric mean, which happens to be the square root of two for all of these. The arithmetic mean gets longer and longer as you get farther and farther. Why does that happen? Well, because the distance between these intervals get further and further. So then you have to have a larger differential mean that sits in between. And this is the relationship between arithmetic mean and geometric mean. Geometric mean being x times y taking the square root. And then the arithmetic mean is x plus y times one half or divided by two. It's the same thing. You could say x times y to the power of one half and then this is x plus y times one half. It's the same thing. Nature looks at adding and multiplying and subtracting as all part of the same function that creates right triangles. So what this does then is it creates a right triangle for the diminished fifth and augmented fourth that's a square root of two, and its arithmetic mean and its geometric mean are totally equal. For the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, it gives us square root of two, gives us 1.416 repeating as its hypotenuse and 112 as its base. For the major third and the minor sixth, we have the square root of two and 1.425 as its arithmetic mean, and then one over four sevenths which is interesting because that also re relates back to the pyramids. Then uh, for the next one, you have the minor third of the major six, that's gonna give us root two and 1.4333 repeating. And then you have one over 10, right? Plus uh, four sevenths times 10, which is also related to that four over seven. And then the major second and the minor seventh is the square root of two. It's got 1.4514 and then one over three times, or sorry, three plus 11 over seven. Again, the Great Pyramid Slope is associated with that. The minor second and the major seventh is the root two, 
8333, 